today is going to be the second to last class, and this is our last week of classes for um, the semester, which makes me really sad. Um, for those of you enrolled in our classes next semester, our webinars do start on January 20th. I know, I'm sad too, Hannah. But at least you have a little month break um, in between, um, so you can have a wonderful holiday season, have some fun with your family, get some gifts, and yada, 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 cool stuff like that. So I'm going to wait just a second before I get started. Um, I'm, I am going to do a review on last class. Today we will be working with um, Plane Maker, so we'll get to um, edit the plane, one of the planes that is already included in X-Plane. And it's a lot of fun, I think, in Plane Maker, because you can actually test the designs that you create in X-Plane so you can see if they actually fly or not. And that's what we'll be actually doing, editing one of the planes to have different wing characteristics and um, talk a little bit about what's known as aspect ratio. So before I get going on that, I'll do a review on last class, um, since it does appear that there's some stragglers that come in a little bit late at the 6 p.m. class. So, last class we discussed the plane's control surfaces and movements uh, actually in the sky. We talked about how the plane will rotate about three axes depending on which of the flight control surfaces are activated. And we discussed on what these guys are called too. So we discussed what is called a roll. So if we were to stick a long pole in through a plane from the front to the back um, and twisted it, that would be the resulting, um, the resulting movement of your airplane. Now, does anybody remember what control surface that pilots use to roll our airplanes? I'm going to give you the names of these control surfaces. Um, so just as a reminder, the control surface that controls your um, the roll is either the rudder, the elevator, or the aileron. Does anybody remember which one is going to control your plane's roll? Anyone? Got three options. Rudder, elevator, or aileron. Take a wild guess. I don't I'm just looking for an answer here. <laughs> Nobody? All right, these are actually going to be the ailerons, which control roll. One of these ailerons will move up and the other will move down. The difference in lift will cause one of the wings to bank higher than the other, which will then make your plane roll. Now, yaw, which is um, if you stuck a pole all the way through the top and the bottom of an airplane and twisted that rod, um, that is what would cause yaw. That's when we move our nose towards the right or left. And it's either controlled by the rudder or the elevator. Which one is it? It's either the plane's rudder or the elevator. Got a 50-50 chance. Go ahead, anybody guess. Rudder, which is on the vertical tail. Or the elevator, which is on the horizontal tail. We all are a quiet bunch today. It's going to be our rudder, which helps our nose turn in directions. Finally, if we were to stick a big old rod through our wings, um, that would control our pitch. That's controlled by the elevators of our airplane. When the elevator flap is down, that makes our nose go down. 
and when our elevator flap is flipped up, our nose will go up. All right, so it's just like a seesaw. Or lift on the back makes the nose go down. Last class, we also discussed um, the stability of an airplane. So airplanes use their tails um, so that they can fly more stable, so that they return to their initial um, condition when distracted, or sorry, not distracted, um, when moved by an external force, so maybe a gust of wind that would blow it off course. And finally, we discussed roll and yaw stability. Um, inherently, airplanes are designed, for the most part, with a little bit of what's called dihedral, which is where your wing tip is um, higher up on the airplane than where it hits on your fuselage here. So what it'll do is make the plane tend to fly upright um, in case it sort of gets rigged to not move in such a way. All right, so that's what we did last class, really. Does anybody have any questions on what we did last class before we get started on today's lesson? Any questions, thoughts, concerns? All right. I will go ahead and get started with today's lesson then which is going to be on what's called aspect ratio. Has anybody ever heard this phrase before? Not necessarily with airplanes, the phrase aspect ratio. Got to know here. Well, I can guarantee you that every single person that is at this webinar right now is looking at something that can be described in terms of aspect ratio. Your monitor, TV screens, are defined in terms of aspect ratio, which is just a ratio between the um, height and the length of your television or your monitor. Yeah, exactly. 16 to 9 or 4 to 3, for example, are examples of aspect ratios for a monitor. Yeah, when you're going to Best Buy or wherever to buy a new TV, you'll see certain ratios on your, um, on the box, for example, just like Hayes said, 16 to 9, 4 to 3, or a couple of them. They just describe the length and the width of your monitor, sort of. I think uh, specifically it's actually the diagonal and the width of your monitor, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, aspect ratio in monitors and aspect ratio in planes, while, have, while they have different definitions, they're used to describe certain functions of um, the object's design. Okay. So the aspect ratio of an aircraft is actually going to be your wingspan divided by your cord length. So your wingspan is literally from wingtip to wingtip, and your cord length, specifically the mean cord length, is the length from the leading edge of your plane's wing to the um, trailing edge. So to get this aspect ratio, you would take this entire wingspan, so say it's 50 feet, divide it by the cord, say this length is five feet. So if aspect ratio is the wingspan divided by the cord, my wingspan's 50 and my cord is five, what would my aspect ratio be? So wingspan, 50, divided by cord, five, We can do math in your head, right? What's 50 divided by 5? It's going to be 10. That would be our aspect ratio. Oops. Now, aspect ratio is um, 
important in terms of plane performance. It gives you a general idea of how much lift your wing is going to produce. It gives you an idea of how long it will take you to take off on a runway. And it will also um, give you an indication on how easy the plane is to handle. Um, we're looking specifically for a number between 1 and 12. Anything less than 1 would be very difficult to fly given the, um, it, it's going to look a little bit gimped when you see this, and I'll show you a low aspect ratio um, when we get to our uh, project a little bit later. And anything above 12 is going to be structurally unsound. So if I have a really, really, really long wingspan, like say 100 feet, and a really tiny cord, so maybe 5 feet, we're going to have some issues. Can anybody guess why we wouldn't want a very long, long, slender wing? And given the quietness that y'all are having today, I'm not sure if anyone's going to answer. But any idea why an aspect ratio that's too big would be a problem? So I'm not talking about necessarily it would have too much lift or anything. Something bad will happen to the wings. Any ideas on what would happen? Exactly. Your wings are going to break. They're going to buckle. They can't handle the amount of lift being generated over them and still maintain their structural integrity. Okay? So, um, usually, even though we can make extra bracers for our wings, that's going to increase weight, that's going to increase cost, and it's going to be a headache for engineers. Now, engineers um, have to do, deal with a series of trade-offs when it comes to flying. So sometimes they need, they need to figure out specifically what the buyer wants and in turn take into consideration the things that's going to hinder. So maybe they want a big aspect ratio but they want it to be very easy to fly or to take off and land. It's not possible. And I'll go a little bit more into that a little bit later. So this would be a exercise that I would do, um, just changing the mean cord to be 5 feet instead of 4.8. So real quick, I want you to just mentally consider what the aspect ratios on all of these um, planes would be. So we're going to assume the mean cord is 5, just so you can do this in your head. So if I had a wingspan of 4 feet and a mean cord of 5 feet, will my aspect ratio reach this number of 1? It's 4 divided by 5 greater than or less than 1. It's going to be less than 1. And I want you to think about how this plane would look. It has a really, really short wingspan, probably shorter than you all, 4 feet, but a really, really fat, chunky wing. We don't want that. That's going to be hard to fly. You might not even get off the ground. And it's going to be a really weird looking airplane. So for the next um, couple of wingspans here, 10 divided by 5 would have an aspect ratio of 2, which would be good. All the way up to 60 divided by 12, 12 5, sorry, which gives you an aspect ratio of 12. Now specifically, this aspect ratio, if I were to actually use 4.8, would be above 12. So all of these planes between 10 and 50 feet will be our only viable planes in this um, example here. Okay. So we're actually going to switch gears and start playing in Plane Maker. Okay. 
So Plane Maker is a part of X-Plane. It's you're going to be able to edit something in Plane Maker and then test it out in X-Plane. So I want you to go ahead and open up X-Plane, or no, I'm sorry, open up Plane Maker, because we will be using that. So I'm going to put your hands down. Please raise your hand once you've gotten Plane Maker um, open. Now, you're not going to see this specifically on your screen. You might see something else or nothing at all. Don't worry if this is not on your screen. I'll show you how to get to these in a little bit. What we're going to be doing is taking one plane, editing its wing five different times, and then testing the takeoff distance on all of these different um, wing lengths. And I'll give you more detailed instructions as we continue along. I'll give you just another second or two to get Plane Maker open. If you've got it open, go ahead and um, take a look at some of the options that it has. A little bit stressful for if you have if you're not too familiar with um, airplanes in general, but. I'll tell you a little bit how this works as we go along. As I've been saying, Plane Maker is just a program to build your own plane or to edit the existing planes that come in X-Plane. Um, it's a really fun program. You can actually build your own plane from scratch if you want to and test it. Um, my experience is that it's very difficult <laughs> to get a working plane just from scratch. So you may find it beneficial to take one of the existing planes and change it just for funsies. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing today, just taking an existing plane and going with it there. So if you've gotten into Plane Maker, I want you to go to File and then Open. In the Aircraft folder, General Aviation, and in Vans RVS, we're going to open the RV-10. So if you need help, here's the file um, hierarchy here. Aircraft, General Aviation, Vans, RVS, and RV-10. We want to open that guy up. All of our planes are going to be modifications on this plane here. Any questions? Anybody having trouble finding that? And I want you to raise your hand once you've gotten your RV-10 open onto your screen. So I see a question. Okay, it just opened. How do you get to that? You're going to go to File and then Open. You're going to make sure you see Aircraft. You're going to go to General Aviation. Then to Vans RVs. And then RV10. <coughs> Yeah, no worries. And so it's going to look sort of like this. If you want to see your plane in different dimensions, you can use WASD on your keyboard. I would recommend using a top view 
because we're going to be changing the aspect ratios of our planes um, and it'll make it easier for you to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File and Save As. We're going to make five copies of our plane. It's going to be, you're going to do this five times then. You're going to save as your name and then 10. So I've already done it. My first name is Caroline, so I made my first one Caroline 10. And then I saved. And then I do it again. File save as your name 20. And you're going to do that all the way up to 50. So you'll have five different planes, or five of the same planes saved under different names. Your name 10, your name 20, your name 30, your name 40, and your name 50. I'm going to give you just a moment to do that. Again, these should all be the exact same plane. You're just saving it under different names. We're doing this so that we don't mess up the initial RV-10 plane. And put your hands down and please raise your hand once you've saved this RV-10 under five different names. I'm going to proceed, but let me know if you're not quite there yet. I will wait a couple more seconds if you need to. I want you to go to File, Open, and open Your Name 50. You can tell if you opened it correctly um, because on the bottom it'll say Aircraft General Aviation Vans RVs, your name 50. And you'll see something different than this that is on my screen. This is, I've already edited it. So yours should look just like the initial RV10 did. So right now all we did was we opened the your name 50. I want you all to go into standard and click on wings. I see a question. Spacebar does something weird. What does it do? test it out real quick. Oh, it just makes it um, a, what this is, if you do click the space bar on the main screen, this gives you um, your plane, but divided up into sort of a, like a grid. This would be used for what's called finite element analysis. Um, all of these points that meet are called nodes, and we could see how the plane would experience stress 
for example. So um, it is very blueprint-ish, but you don't need to worry about that really. Just a cool aside. So we're at, at standard and then wings. And there's a lot of really crazy numbers and switches and buttons and stuff. We're only going to be changing three things. Okay? We're going to be changing, or before I go to that, let me say something first. We're only going to be using, if you see these tabs at the top, wing one and wing two. So if wing one is highlighted, you can see on the airplane itself, um, the black part is what you're going to be editing. So wing one is going to be the part of your wing that connects to the fuselage, so it connects to the body of your aircraft. We will also be using wing two, and you can see the uh, black highlighting indicating that um, we're going to be changing that. We're going to be changing the semi-length, which is half of the wingspan, in wing one. That's right here, this very top left option. In wing two, we will be changing the lat arm and the vert arm. You will not be changing anything else. So make sure before I, you put in any numbers that you are in the correct um, wing. All right. So I have a chart right here that will give you all of the, um, the dimensions you need to change. So I'm actually going to go through this, the first one with you, which is going to be the first name and then 50. So the number refers to the wingspan. So first name 50, you're going to have a wingspan of 50. Under wing 1, you're going to want to change your semi-length to 25. All right, so wing 1, you can change the semi-length to 25. I'll give you just a second to do that. If you've got wing one highlighted, do not touch lat arm or vert arm. Don't touch anything else except this semi-length under wing one. If I go to wing two, the only things we're touching is lat arm and vert arm. Do not touch semi-length at all on wing two. We're going to change our lat arm to 24.95 and our vert arm to 0 0.25. You need to make sure that you are in the right wing, or the correct wing um, configuration, so that you don't change the wrong thing. If you do change it, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. I can help you fix it. So wing one, semi-length is 25. Wing two, flat arm 24.95. Vert arm is 25. If you've done it right, you'll have a plane that looks sort of like this. Your wing should be connected to your body. If it's not, you've done something wrong. If you've succeeded, you can click on the X to get out of the menu and then go to File and Save. Any questions on that procedure? What we're going to be doing for the other four wings. All 
All right. So let's go ahead, go to File, Open, go to Your Name 40, and then change it up from there. I am going to pause my screen just for now so you can be sure to be able to see all this stuff. If you change the wrong thing and your wing looks a little bit weird, that's okay. Let me know in a question and I can help you fix whatever you changed so that it's back to its regular state. I will be putting your hands down. Please raise them once you've gotten all of these values incorrectly. incorrectly. And for all five of them, not just for the two. And if you dirty did that, wow, that was quick. <laughs> If you've already gotten it, you also go ahead and open up um, some of the other options in Plane Maker. You can change the library, which is just like painting your airplane. Um, you can change like literally everything. But if you do that, make sure you're not messing up these planes that we customized. Except for the, the paint, you can change the paint, no big deal. Notice, too, that the wing to vert arm does go negative. Make sure that you keep it negative. Also make sure to save after every single um, of these three things that you change. If you've gotten all these, remember to keep, raise your hand, keep it raised. If something's looks looking wrong, make sure that you entered your data into the correct place. I'm asking you to raise your hand so I know when y'all are done. I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to 
be about one more minute to finish this up. Also, if you finish this up, go ahead and open up X-Plane. Alright, I'll go ahead and proceed. If you're not quite there yet, stop me and I'll wait just another minute. I need to open up X-Plane. Okay, I'll wait just another second. Let me know when you're good to go. Well, we're going to be doing an X plane is doing a couple of takeoffs and we're going to compare the liftoff distance for all these different plane aspect ratios. And number 10 is hilarious. Yeah, it's a little bit of a wonky looking plane <laughs> and you'll see how weird it flies um, soon. <laughs> So to those of you that are finished, I want you to assume we have a five um, foot cord length. I want you to calculate the aspect ratios of all of these aircraft. So wingspan divided by five. Good to go. All right, cool. So in X-Plane, before we do anything, I want you to go to Settings, and then Data Input and Output. We want to click the last two checkboxes on line three, which is Speeds. Line 21, which is loc vel dist traveled. Line 
And line 66, which is landing gear vert force. The first plane that we're going to test the takeoff distance with is going to be our 50. So we're going to change our plane to the 50. We're going to be at low E as usual. And we're going to do some liftoffs. What I want you all to do is find or is take off one time in each of these planes and either write down the numbers or numbers that you get for liftoff or tell them to me. Now to open your plane you'll go into settings and then the quick flight setup. We're going to open our aircraft and your file should be in aircraft, general aviation, vans, RVs, and then you'll find your aircraft. And in your data input and output, this is the ones that you're going to want to have um, checked. No worries. So remember what I told you about lifting off, where you want to keep your um, plane going straight, everything level and everything. Go ahead and try taking off in your 50. Write down the number or maybe type it into a question or something so that you remember it. And we're going to try that for all five of our planes. We're going to find the liftoff distance for all five of these. So remember, this is what we're looking for, this dist. We're going to do the same thing where we try to get to 75 to 80 knots before we lift off and then pause. Anybody have a number for me? How long it took the 50 to lift off? My number is actually a little bit high, but
in my last class, we got a number ranging somewhere between 300 and 600. My number is very, very high, actually. I think I messed up on the flight. So that's pretty short, isn't it? If y'all remember, we had, you know, a couple thousand for our Cessna. So take a look at our plane. Look at how long the wingspan is. Notice how big the aspect ratio is. So this very, very large aspect ratio means that our plane's producing a lot of lift and is able to take off at a shorter distance, at a short distance, rather. Does that make sense? We're producing lots of lift with this big aspect ratio. Short distance to take off. Don't have to go, as, go very fast to take off. Any questions on that? Because we're going to try it now for 40, 30, 20, and 10. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on that. If somebody would be so kind to send me some numbers that it took you to lift off with these other wingspans, that would be amazing. Otherwise, we'll use my a little bit off numbers. While I would like for you to do all five of these, I'm just going to go straight to 30 since I know sort of how this works already. Just because we can interpolate for the other ones. But Anybody have a number for 40? It shouldn't be as low as 21 feet. <laughs> Should be looking at about maybe 600, 700. And I'll just try it for 30. but I got a number for 30 for me. Nine hundred or a thousand, that seems about right. 
So as our aspect, or as our wingspans are getting shorter, and therefore our aspect ratios are getting smaller, is it taking longer, or is it taking a shorter amount of distance to lift off? Smaller aspect ratio, longer or shorter to take off? Longer. Could we assume that's going to continue for 20 and 10 as well? We could assume, but because we can test it, we should do that instead. Um, that said, we will assume just because uh, interest of time. The smaller the aspect ratio, the longer it will take to lift off. So if it takes less time to take off, are our wings producing more lift or less lift? If, it's, if we're taking off real quick, are we getting more lift or less lift from our wings? You got 50-50 chance. If you remember what I said about the 50 plane, that's a really big aspect ratio, and it took off really, really quickly. So short takeoff time means more lift. Therefore, having a high aspect ratio Let's us take off in a shorter amount of time. As well as, what was the other thing? Um, an increased amount of lift being generated over our wings. Now, can anybody take a guess on how we could increase our aspect ratio without changing the length of the wingspan? So remember that our aspect ratio is a function of the wingspan and what else? The cord, yeah. If we decreased our cord length, we would increase our aspect ratio. So at this point, what I'm going to want you to do is land your plane, land your 50 wingspan plane, and then try to land your 10 wingspan plane. I'm going to let you do this. It'll take a couple minutes. You'll notice a couple of different things that happen with handling, and I'll explain why this happens once you give that a try. So I'm going to give you about three or four minutes to try landing your 50 and then your 10. I'll give it a try too, just for fun. I'm going to land my 50. Remember how you land by putting your throttle down. Just note how your plane responds to your mouse's movements each time you land. So for the 50 and then for the 10.
not very good at landing. <laughs> ah! Coming in too high. You're not either, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming in like way too high right now. I have no throttle on. I'm landing the way I just specifically told you to not land. <laughs> there we go. Landed it with the 50, poorly, but nonetheless. Now let's try that guy with the 10, this little nub guy. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Pretty poorly, I would say. Um, can't even land it, I don't think. But notice how responsive the plane is to your mouse's movements. That's really what I'm looking for. Wow, that was a horrible landing. <laughs> I didn't even land there. So despite my poor landing, I want you to think about it. You crashed too? I can't even lift off with that plane, to be honest. So <laughs> I just kind of flip over immediately. So of the two, which plane is easier to land? See, I would also say the 50, but it's kind of a trade-off. Um, the high aspect ratio plane, you can actually land a little bit slower because the stall speed's a little bit lower. But you might notice that your plane isn't quite as um, responsive to um, movements of your mouse, whereas the 10 was very, very responsive to movements of your mouse. So which of the two planes, if you were to successfully land the 10, is more precise? Meaning it responds better to mouse movements, it handles more, a little bit better. Because it's definitely not the 50. That low aspect ratio plane, that 10 plane, is a lot more agile, a lot more um, responsive to movements in the of the control surfaces. Now, if you haven't guessed yet, gliders have a very large aspect ratio. Since they, d they don't have power, they need to produce a lot of lift. Therefore, having a lot of wing area um, is a big, important design feature. Why don't these guys have landing gear attached to their wings? And this is another one of those sneaky things about the actual structure of the wings. And it's because um, not having or having landing gear on the wings the wings are not able to support the landing gear since they're so long you can't even fly the ten it's impossible yeah um that actually goes to my next question do world war ii fighter pilots planes have a larger or small aspect ratio and i want you to think about how nimble and crazy a lot of those planes were would it have a really really big aspect ratio to be hard to fly And no, it will not. They have a small aspect ratio that requires very trained pilots. So anyways, it is 7 o'clock. So does anybody have any questions on what we went over today? If you don't have any questions, you are free to go. Thank you all for coming out.
and I will talk to you all on Wednesday for our last class. So take care, everybody.